All right, so now I'm gonna go through our notes. There's something called the input function. So I say it right here, we're gonna ask, ask the user for information. Um, a lot of programming is about things called functions. We've already used a function. The print call is a function. We, did, we didn't write it, but when you call print, when you call print, Python is accessing code that somebody else wrote that does the printing stuff, and that's a function. We're going to use another function today called input. And uh, but first, I'm showing you the print function. This uh, it says down here: functions may or may not take arguments. That's pieces of information that you send over to the function. So. Print, you can say print with nothing in it, and it just prints a blank line. Hey, in the back, can you guys not talk right now? Because I'm, Mateo, Preston, can you guys be quiet? Because I'm trying to um, cover material. So if you call print with nothing in it, and it just prints a blank line. If you call print with some text, you know, in quotes, it'll print that. And you can print numbers too. You can print multiple things with commas in between. Um, and it'll print those things uh, like, these are some examples. So today, the input function works like this. Uh, you, you have to have a variable where you're gonna put the stuff that you're trying to get from the user. In this case, I'm obviously asking the user for their name. So I make a variable called name. I just say name equals input. And then you have to have some sort of prompt like, hey, I'm gonna, you know, please enter your name or what's the password or something like that. And then Python stops and waits for the user to enter something and then hit the enter key. So uh, variable names, like right here, I just used the word name. They can be letters and numbers, but no spaces. They have to, be, if, if you have multiple words, you have to kind of jam them together without spaces. And you can't start a variable name with a number. So you could have a variable name secret word if you were trying to keep some secret in the program or name, or, I mean, you could just do A, B, C, but lots of times it's better to use a name that uh, a variable name that makes some sort of sense. So um, the input function, whatever you get from the user is stored as they call it a string in computer programming. That just means a piece of text. So even if you enter 2021 or the number 17, I know you think that's a number, but Python will think of it as a piece of text, um, like 17, uh, like you can't add to it. It's just something that you're, that you're moving around as a little piece of text. Um, so we have another function that we will sometimes use that changes a piece of text into a number, and that's the int function. So you know, why do computers care? Well, they have to know what kind of data they're working with. So they're either working with a number or a piece of text, or, or uh, sometimes there's variables that have lists of things in them. They're called list variables. So here's an example down here. The number equals input, please enter a number. And then on the next line, I, I change. So after that first line, whatever they typed in is considered a piece of text. And then on the next line, we're changing it into a number. So um, if you don't do that, you can add anything to it or treat it like a number. So you can also notice how here I do it on two different lines. You can also do it all on one line. You stack them inside each other. So right here we have int parentheses and then input, please enter a number. And then uh, if you do it all on one line, it's great. You have to put two parentheses at the end because every open parentheses has to have a closed parentheses. Um, and Python starts on the inside and works its way out. So the inside one, please enter a number. It'll do that first, and then it'll turn it into uh, a, an integer, which is a number. So uh, one last thing before you start today is all programming languages give you a way to make comments in your code, and a comment is just a piece of text that the computer ignores. So it's like a way for you to label pieces of your code, and so. I mostly ask you to label, like, put a comment in that has your name at the top of the program, you know, so that um, I know whose program it is. Or sometimes if you have a really complicated program, you would have comments that say, this is the part that does this part, and this is, does this other thing, or, 
or you, may, you might mark a thing like, I need help with this part, I don't understand. Um, but a comment you do with a this hashtag symbol at the front of the line, and then you, you could type whatever you want on that line. It doesn't, doesn't cause any trouble. So today's assignment, um, it's going to use our new commands, and I'm going to post it, and I'll walk around and help. So the slide deck that I just you know went through, that'll be on there. And uh, in a little bit, I also have a video where I work the whole thing out again because I don't want to leave anyone behind. Um, all right, I posted it. Um, and there's, I'm going to download it onto my computer so I can open it up separate, but, uh, go ahead and open it up and make a new REPL. So don't, don't destroy your old one. You go back to REPL and do a plus sign, Python, make a new REPL, name it day three and go for it. And I will turn off the recording.